even though it was done on the last episode, and I've touched on it before, will you tell me briefly what a, a captive is in your own words, so that way somebody listening to it for the rest of the episode knows what we're talking about? Yes. So, really, a captive is nothing more than an iteration in self-funding. So it's like self-funding with protection. So if you think about traditional self-funding, you've got a layer of risk that you take on your own. Mm -hmm. um, and so for folks that understand what a spec deductible is, that's simple, but a specific deductible is basically what protects you from smaller, more predictable claims. So you decide how much risk you want. So let's say you decide as a company you want $50,000 of risk per member. That's the foundation or the self-funded base. In a traditional self-funded model, then your stop loss kicks in and protects you above that 50000 yep. In a captive, the stop loss is combined with the captive. So the stop loss provider and the captive share risk together. Now, some do what's called a quota share, where they share that risk truthfully, like it's 60-40, 50-50. We do a floating layer. So we take 100% of the risk above the spec up to a certain amount. Okay. So we we own all of the risk. We don't share that risk. So it's just a different way to, to finance it. We're not the only ones that do it, but that's really what happens. So the, what's the inverse of a quota share? What do you call that, the term, if you take all the risk? Is floating layer. Floating layer. Floating said, layer. Okay, okay. Yeah, floating layer. So in a captive model, the, um, the next step beyond spec is shared with the captive and the reinsurer. And then lastly, on top of that, which is where people get really tripped up. So when you talk to a CFO or CEO and you say self-funded or head of HR, they panic. Because if you say $50,000 times 200 employees, that's way more than I'm paying today. You know, you're starting to get into the teens of millions when my health care plan might be 1.1, 2.1 million. Yeah. So the sleep insurance or the aggregate yeah. protection covers them from the high dollar costs or a lot of little yep. claims. And so that's the last piece of the captive. So you've got three modes. You've got self-funded layer, captive layer, which is self-fund or uh, stop loss, and then aggregate insurance. Okay. So it's just a, another iteration of self-funding, but I think it is uniquely positioned to be successful in the smaller to medium size. So you can go as low as, say, 20 um, in some cases, you can go a little bit smaller, but the, the case is difficult there just because of the volatility of claims. And depending on the program, going to about 1000 or more, uh, depending on the program, because sometimes the cost advantages aren't quite as obvious okay. um, at that size. But I would tell you anywhere from 25 to 1000 a captive is a really strong option because rather than being a company of 250 you now are a company of whatever size the captive is. So in our case, um, you know, you may be part of a program that sits with six to ten thousand members. So rather than be twenty or two hundred employees, you're now part of a company of six thousand employees, mm -hmm. which means you've got economies of scale, which means you've got more leverage. And when you have your bad year, which actuarially speaking, you'll have one out of every five, maybe two out of every five years, you'll have really rough health outcomes. That means that when that renewal comes, it's not just you going at it. Exactly. You've got some leverage in the market to say, let's negotiate our costs. You're not sharing your costs. You just have more leverage. Okay.